Hello all my uh, people out here that enjoy nature and um, want to learn about some different plants we have here in the area. So uh, once again, I'm Aubrey Dawson. I am out here at the Campbell County Environmental Education Center on Racetrack Road. And uh, today we, I'm going to kind of take a walk around and uh, show you some different plants we have around here. Uh, what they look like, um, if they have any cool, um, interesting features about them. Right now, I am outside at our birding area. If you ever come to our building, we have uh, one-way windows out there, out in our building, so you can look out and watch the birds, but they can't see you, and so um, you can watch them a little bit longer, or you can sit on the benches outside and just enjoy it. So I wanted to start it with a very um, interesting tree. If you go to maybe farmer's markets, sometimes you see this being sold. Um, and a lot of this, I'm going to have the camera flipped around. So um, if you're someone like me that needs uh, to read lips to understand what somebody is saying, um, I apologize. Maybe I can figure out if there is a future where I can put in... Um, uh, like the captions. I uh, don't know exactly how to do that yet, but I'll, I'll work on it. Um, so yeah, I want you guys to be able to see the plants up close. Um, so let me flip this camera. All right. So this tree right here, I'm going to show you. This is a persimmon and I'll show you the bark up close. Um, it's grooved pretty deeply. Uh, this tree isn't very wide. Um, it's not a very old tree, but persimmon produce these fruits right here. So um, last year this tree was heavily, heavily fruited. Let's go over here. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in. There's a couple more up there. So, I guess I can flip the camera around to kind of talk about it so you can, can see what I'm saying. Um, Alright, so right now you can see that this fruit is green. Actually, that's not going to work too well, is it? Um, maybe if I hold it like that. So, yeah, like I said, um, this fruit um, is an edible fruit. Right now, it's pretty green. Um, if you were to eat this as is, it is very tart, very sour. Um, you're not going to enjoy it. And that's the way the tree um, protects itself. So it doesn't get uh, ate too soon by raccoons, possum, birds. There is a seed inside. So what happens... What happens is this fruit actually turns a nice deep orange color um, and that's when it's almost like mushy. That's when you know it's ready to eat. Sometimes if you find them fresh on the ground, um, that's when they're best and they have almost like a um, tangerine, uh, orange, citrus type of um, flavor. and that people make jams out of them, I know. So, they're pretty tasty. And what happens is these seeds fall on the ground and once they are, um, you know, fresh enough to eat, basically like a raccoon comes along, eats it, eats the seed, and then goes off in the woods, goes to the bathroom, and that seed is planted in a little fertilizer packet, and you hopefully have a new persimmon. Now persimmon trees, I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of plants need male and females in order to make their fruit. So if we look over here at this tree, there's no fruit on it. Um, and this tree right next to it has the fruit. So we have the female bearing the fruit and the male whose pollen um, gets transferred over to this flowering um, persimmon tree and produces uh, this fruit. So let's 
see what else I can show you just out here in our birding area. Let me flip this around again. So this is a beautiful flower over here. Um, this is Black-Eyed Susan. This is a great native plant to um, put in your landscape. Um, birds and pollinators love this. Uh, Black-Eyed Susans actually um, represent, let me see, let me think here, motivation and, oh shoot, I forget. Uh, I know motivation for sure. Um, it's a very hardy plant. It can grow in a lot of areas. So, and it's, it's really, there's like, this, to me, when I see this, I think of fall. It's just beautiful. Let's see. I'm grab my mic cord here. Go on for a little walk around the bend. As you can see, our little pond area. We got some fish in there, lily pads. Oh, there went a frog. So I'm going to come over here to these. This right here, ooh, this one actually has a bee on it. There we go, Mr. Bumblebee, or Miss Bumblebee. This is Button Bush. This is a great native plant to uh, put in your landscaping as well. Um, here we go, we got some more busy bees over here. Right now I don't have the honeybees out here, so all these bumblebees are taking full advantage. Um, I had a hummingbird moth, uh, clear winged moth on here the other day, but this is one of my favorite plants. It looks like little disco balls everywhere. So that is button bush. Let's flip around here. So another great fruiting native tree. These don't have fruit on them yet. This is a pawpaw. Here, so you can see this spelling. Pawpaw. So this, actually this month, um, and I'm going to go in the woods where I live. I have a big pawpaw patch and I am going to see if they are producing any fruit yet. And the fruit kind of look like, oh gosh, I ate a spider. See, this is what happens when you get me outside. I can get distracted more easily. Let's look at this guy. Can you see this cool looking spider on here? Let's do the zoom. Make like it more blurry. It's nice and white. It's like camouflage on there. He has, his legs are green like the leaf. So, after that distraction, as I was saying, um, they should start fruiting here. Um, they might already be fruiting. I have to check and see. I've just been busy and haven't had time to go and look. But um, their fruit kind of looks like a banana um, or what you'd find in a grocery store. But a little bit smaller, thicker. And a lot of people, you, I've seen people do um, pawpaw beverages, breads, um, bake all sorts of, I remember in college where I lived, there was pawpaws everywhere. There's even a pawpaw festival and um, we would wake up in the morning, you know, in college sometimes you live with a lot of roommates and we would have, you know, pawpaw pancakes or muffins. So we took full advantage of what um, we had around us and it actually helped you save money too by, you know, using the food right in your backyard. So I saw another cool plant over here. Let's see, flip this around. This beauty. And here in a minute we'll go in our boardwalk area and we'll be able to see more. This right here. Can you see that flower? This is jewelweed or touch me not. And it gets its name touch me not. And you can see it's not quite ready. But this little tiny seed pod actually gets bigger and you barely touch those seed pods and they explode and then the wind actually will carry those seeds and you'll have all sorts of it growing um, by those seeds dispersing. 
and those seeds are actually edible. They are in the nut family. Um, they're teeny, teeny, tiny. So you would need, you know, a lot of them in order to make a meal for yourself. But if you just want to try it, um, but if you have a nut allergy, definitely don't try it. Um, I have bumblebees flying all around me out here. Um, but if you want to try it, oh wait, I just saw a seed that might be ready. Let's see. Right here's a big fat one. Oh, I don't think that got on on camera because my hand was in a way. Yeah, you barely touch them and they explode. But we'll go down to the boardwalk and maybe I'll be able to show you better. Um, but yeah, pollinators love to go into these um, and get um, the pollen and the nectar out of there. The leaves, actually, if you have poison ivy or bug bite, you can crush the leaves and wipe that on. It doesn't take it away, doesn't get rid of it, but it takes the itch away. So very, and it grows in wetland area or wet areas. Um, so if you're camping and you're itchy, find a wet area, you're more likely to find this plant, and you can use it um, to take the itch away if you don't have, you know, any creams or medication with you. So I'm going to flip this around again and let's walk down to the boardwalk area and maybe find something else. Oh, I can barely get up. Alright. Oh, we don't have to go far at all. This beautiful tree is a red bud tree. It has heart shaped leaves, very unique to it. It is an understory tree, so that means it grows under the tree canopy. So these trees get bright um, pinkish purple flowers in the springtime. They're the first to bloom, almost the first to bloom. And um, they have a lot of color. Those, actually, those little flowers are edible also. Sometimes if you go to a fancy restaurant, you might see... Um, if you get a salad, you might see these purple flowers, you know, kind of on the edge. Um, but they are edible uh, to, to consume. Uh, let's see. see. See how big these leaves are? A lot of people plant these in their front yard and they don't do so well. And it's because they're not meant to be in direct sun. They need some shade. Alright, let's flip this around again. Stay along the edge here because I guarantee you'll see something else I can talk about. I got some more jewel weed down here. You can see those flowers from far away. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's an interesting plant. So this is autumn as in like the season autumn and then olive like the olive you eat uh, so autumn olive uh, you can see how shiny this uh, shrub is this is actually considered an invasive species which means it was brought over a lot of our invasives like honeysuckle autumn olive, multiflora rose, um, they kind of, they were brought over from um, Asia, Europe, and used for different reasons, um, landscaping, because they are pretty to look at, um, you know, who wouldn't want a bright, shiny, you know, shrub in their, around their home, um, it also has these really beautiful, shiny berries, kind of the same thing, the birds eat these berries, um, they fly somewhere, go to the bathroom, and then these can grow in just about any any type of soil. They do, um, one benefit of these is if you have a hillside, um, honeysuckle and all, autumn olive will help keep that hillside from eroding. Um, so that's beneficial. And then also, I like to call this nature's glitter factory. So you see how shiny those are? If you take this leaf off and then rub it on your hand or your arm, it rubs off and it looks like glitter. So that's autumn olive. I'm already at 15 minutes, guys. 
I don't think I'll get around the entire trail today. Maybe I'll do like a part two, you know, come walk with me. So here's part of the trail. Let's see where it heads, starts off. But I hope you guys have been enjoying your summer and enjoy these videos. Um, it's kind of a different way to do it. I would much rather have you guys here in person um, to show you some of this stuff. Um, this plant right here, I wasn't really going to talk about it because it doesn't look like much now. Um, but it gets pretty um, flowers on it, and it's called yellow flowers. It's called St. John's Wort. And you can actually find um, like capsules of St. John, John's Worts in your you know, pharmacy, grocery store um, to take as a vitamin. Or not as a vitamin, but it helps aid you in different, different things. That you might have going on. Um, so walk towards the boardwalk area here. There's another red bud, smaller. So we are actually going to be getting, I know this, you can kind of see this is collapsing. We are actually getting all of our boardwalks and bridge um, updated here this year. So next time you come for a walk, this might all look brand new. It won't look anything like this. Uh, okay, here's a cool one. Cattails. So most of the time, these right here are cattails. Um, they have like the hot dog on top, which I'll be able to probably show you some more better here. Get more jewelweed. You can see it all over. But cattails actually, what's cool about those is cattails, you can actually, you can take, like, you can pull it up and the root on there, it's white, and you would peel it like you'd peel a green onion. Um, you'd be eating at home with dinner and um, cut off like the little hairs and you can actually eat the root of a cattail. But you have to be uh, careful because cattails are filter plants. And what does a water filter do? It filters out all the bad stuff you don't want to ingest. So basically, you know, a cattail is filtering all, all the bad stuff in this water system. Um, well, it's one of the plants doing that. And so there's a golf course nearby that, you know, surely they spray some sort of uh, chemicals on the greens to keep them that pretty color. Because if you were to look at, you know, another, you know, your yard at home, if you're not treating it, you're going to have, you know, dead spots. Um, that's just, you know, nature. We have rain, not enough rain, too much rain, too much sun, not enough sun. So it's, you know, this cycle. So you have chemicals coming from there. We have a road, um, you know, 100 yards away that, you know, a car driving by that has oil or gas leaking, that comes into the waterway. A cow pasture next door, you know, cows uh, produce manure that gets washed away into this watershed. And so this plant is filtering all that. So essentially, you'd be eating all that, you know, oil, chemicals, manure, and waste. Um, but there are areas out there that are pretty clean areas you could experience, you know, what a cat and cattail root tastes like. Um, a lot of people say cucumber. I think it tastes very similar, you know, if you're eating a watermelon and get close to the rind, that kind of flavor. Um, which I don't like cucumbers or watermelon, so I'm not a big fan of cattails. And there's a little, little snail on here. This little guy hanging out. Let's go walk a little bit further, see what else we can talk about. So here we have a black willow. 
And if you come out here, you will see um, some of our trees actually have these signs on them. Um, oh my gosh, look at this, guys. I don't know why I'm whispering. It doesn't, I don't think it would mind me talking. Look at this cool caterpillar. How awesome is that? So, yeah, this is Black Willow. And um, this was very beneficial to uh, Native Americans. There's an ingredient in aspirin we take now. Salis I always say this wrong. wrong salicylic acid? I know I, I said that wrong. Um, but it is what, you know, helps take our pain away that we're having. And it comes from... Um, originally came from black willow. Now we have a synthetic form of it that, you know, we can mass produce, you know, our painkillers for us. Our, you know, uh, Tylenol, Advil, that kind of stuff. Um, but you, Native Americans used to take, you know, a twig or a piece of the bark and they would chew on it and that would release, you know, um, that uh, painkiller and would help them, you know, feel better if they had an ailment. So let me flip this around again. You see all the cattails and I hear thunder in the background. So let me get to walk in and hopefully we can see some more um, plants here. Got more willow coming up. Also, we have um, informational signs along our trails that I'm in the process process of uh, kind of updating these as well. People are going to think I'm out here talking to myself. That's okay. I actually talk to myself quite often. Here we have um, some poison ivy three leaves let it be um, but we do have a tree called box elder that has three leaves um, it's just one is oppositely oppositely arranged one is alternately um, arranged and maybe I can do another video explaining exactly how what that means um, but yeah poison ivy grows these little tendrils on it so it can climb trees it actually can grow off the ground let's see um here's box elder so it looks very similar uh, let's see here we go box elder which i guess i can show you now is opposite oppositely arranged so you have one stem on this side one stem on this side where poison ivy three leaves. I don't want to get too close, but let me find a pokey stick here. Um, gotta watch out because I get poison ivy rash real bad. So we have one leaf up here, one stem coming. You go down, here's another stem. So it's alternate, um, alternately arranged. So, um, it can grow from the ground, look like a small tree. Um, it actually gets white berries on it as well that birds love to eat. And so what happens is if you're sensitive and you touch poison ivy, that oil gets onto your skin and then produces a rash, um, which, um, makes you itch for a week or two. And they make over the counter stuff that helps, you know, with the itchy, or you can use jewelweed leaves. Let's walk a little bit more. We can talk about one more plant, maybe, or tree. Oh. <laughs> People stall. Oh, let's go over here and look at. Um, here's a sycamore tree. We'll go look at one a little bit closer. Hi, how are you? 
So here's a better view of what the cattails look like. This is what I was talking about when I say it kind of looks like hot dogs on top. And these are all seeds. Um, they all get big and fluffy. This one's a dead one that's already um, uh, all the seeds blow away from that. You can see in the background here. Let's see if it zooms. Mm, that's pretty far off. But yeah, those turn into seed and turn into more cattails. And we got the jewel weed. The black willow. These are all um, wet loving trees and plants. Let's see. Um, well, this, um, I'm almost positive, I'll have to look it up. Pretty sure this is purple loose strife, um, which is pretty invasive. Um, actually, to get rid of this, the best thing you do is put a trash bag over it, cut the stem off, and dispose of it properly. Um, if not, it will take over um, an area very quickly. So, yeah, I can kind of see it sporadic through here. So, that's something that I gotta take care of. So, here we go uh, American sycamore. Um, has these shaped leaves. Let's step out. If you look up, you can see the white bark. Um, when these grow in wet areas, when Native Americans would travel, um, they would look for groves of these because they knew there was a water source nearby. And with water, you have. Um, you know, not only hydration, but you have food, whether that be fish or other animals coming to the water source to drink. You also, these trees, um, if they could cut these down and easily hollow them out and make canoes. Uh, these trees also, when the um, limbs get, like you can see a big limb up there, when they get pretty big, sometimes they naturally fall off and produce cavities which are great for woodpeckers and owls, squirrels to nest in. So that is our American sycamore. So, let's flip this around. So like I said, uh, this is just part one, I think. Um, I forgot my sunglasses. Maybe I'll make a part two or three, and we have about a mile, mile and a half worth of trails, and this was just right around our building. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, um, please send me an email. Uh, the library probably, um, or I can post it in the, com the description email or call me. Or you can stop out here at the Environmental Center, go for a walk, explore the building. And, and oh, she's fine. <laughs> There's dog out here. So I hope you all have a great day. Thanks you for joining me.